If you like your names complicated and your phones with a notch, meet the LG G7 ThinQ. No matter how many times you read that name, don't pronounce it Think. And if you stick around to the end, I've got my worst pun I've ever had in nine years waiting for you. So despite a silly name, the G7, as I'm just gonna call it, and you should too, is a really solid phone, boasting some unique specs, which is becoming increasingly tough to do, and pretty much every phone out now is just some version of good. I know on paper, a lot of people are gonna be upset. The 6.1 inch QHD Plus full vision display is LCD and not OLED. I even did my own eye roll when I heard LCD, but once I actually had a chance to use it, it didn't matter. Simply, the screen looks amazing regardless of the tech. Colors look incredibly vibrant, blacks were, were black. And the screen, despite its technology, reminded me of the Samsung displays on how they often don't look real. They look like a sticker instead of a screen. It's the same here with the G7, which is about as big a compliment as I can possibly give a display. The screen though is a pretty useful trick up its notch sleeve. It's got a brightness boost mode, which boosts things up to 1000 nits of brightness, which in the real world means you'll be able to clearly see the screen even in the brightest of direct sunlight, which is a gigantic win for LG. I'd imagine though that boost mode is gonna do a number on the 3000 lamp hour battery, but at least quick charge and wireless charging are here to juice the sucker up faster. So the G line sits below the V in LG's lineup. And I get that, but the spec list seems to be kind of like a grab bag of 2018 and 2017 tech. On the awesome side, you got the Snapdragon 845, which is a beast of a processor. On the shrug emoji side, four gigabytes of RAM, which is still plenty for smooth operation, but is a bit anemic by mid 2018 standards. Especially if you got phones coming out with eight gigs. I would have liked to have seen six here to help extend the life of the device. 64 gigabytes of storage is standard, but at least it's expandable. Also, here's the headphone jack, and I think that might be the biggest reason people buy LG phones. It's got a 32-bit Hi-Fi quad DAC. LG really seems to get audiophiles, which makes the next thing I'm about to say seem a bit contradictory at first. No stereo speakers. Instead, LG is using the entire chassis of the phone as a resonance chamber to boost the bass. That means the phone is kind of going to vibrate when you're playing music, but the bass does sound, sound bassy. It just sounded good. This newish resonance technology is called LG's Boombox, and I'd imagine we're going to see it show up in a ton of future LG flagships. In the hand, the phone feels awesome. I didn't really like to feel the V30, it almost felt hollow. The G7 though feels really solid with its glass back, it, it feels premium. Its narrow body is really reminiscent of the Galaxy S9, minus the curved screen on the side. I think they just nailed the, the tactile in your hand test with this one. There is a dedicated assistant button, which mercifully is tied to Google Assistant. And I give LG a ton of credit for not making their own assistant and then just cramming it down our throats. I asked them if it was remappable and they said, nope, but they could open it up in the future. So there's that non-committal answer for you. Speaking of design, it, it's got a notch. It doesn't have any sort of advanced facial unlocking hardware. So I'm not sure why the notch is there, but hey, at least it fits in with what seems to be 2018 flagship design standards. And speaking of that notch, it can actually be hidden via software. I was kind of worried at first since the screen isn't OLED, but it hides the notch pretty well. LG is also utilizing software that you customize the notch area with different backgrounds. So that's, that's a thing you can do now. LG's done a really nice job with their cameras here. The dual sensors on the back are both 60 megapixels, one with 107 degree field of view and one with 71 degrees, making the G7 all about that wide angle. The software is also going to utilize a wide angle sensor to map the background for portrait mode, which is here in the G7 and at least on first impressions worked pretty well. Much like the V30S, AI is a big part of the camera, recognizing what you're snapping pics of and adjusting the sensors to suit it. Other small bits to know, it's running Android 8.1 with LG's custom UI on it. And I'm not going to talk too much about LG's UI, but I will say hooray for launchers. So overall, LG made a really solid phone. They aren't trying to lure you in with fancy gimmicks like AI-based emojis or trying to force their own assistance down your throat. Instead, they're giving consumers a well-rounded phone that's good at almost everything, at a price point below the V30. So while the G7 might not be for anyone in particular, it's a device that's built for everyone. Thank you for watching. Sorry. <laughs>